All right, uh, Shabbat First and foremost, I want to start by giving all praises and then glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rakakodash, that one unto my apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone. Much peace and love to all the brothers doing this work in truth and sincerity. Shabbat Shalom. This is uh, the book of Second Edges, chapter 15. I'm going to start at verse 10. It says, But behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. And right now, the nation of Israel is dwelling in the land of Egypt, which is uh, which is talking about America um, in this modern day time. America is the modern day Egypt. You know, um, the word Egypt just means bondage. Um, so we're currently in the, under bondage upon the nation of Edom. But the Lord is not going to suffer us to dwell here anymore because very soon the Lord, Yahweh Bashem al is going to actually smite Egypt with plagues as she did as he did before and he's going to destroy all the land of Egypt you know and it's going to be remain desolate for generations this is a uh, verse 11 it says but I will bring them with a mighty hand that means the Lord is going to actually intervene and he's going to um, strongly deliver us and they stretched our arm and smite Egypt with plagues now one of those plagues you know it, the Lord smote Egypt with many plagues he smote on Egypt with lice he smote Egypt with lice. He smote Egypt with uh, he smote Egypt with uh, locusts. He um, killed the, uh, the firstborn. He killed all the beasts. He killed a, killed a lot of beasts. Um, he basically brung down the infrastructure of Egypt um, as he was plaguing Egypt. You know, he was bringing it down the infrastructure of it. You know. Um, the Lord systematically, you know, uh, strategically destroyed East, uh, Egypt and he finished it off with a bang. You know, you know what I'm saying um, it says, verse 12, Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that God shall bring upon it. Now, though, the Lord is going to hit many hit uh, this modern Egypt with many plagues, um, including a new plague that the Lord has created. This is uh, Zechariah chapter 12, verse uh, 8. Is it 8? No. No, it's 14 and 12. So like, yeah. This is Zechariah 14 and 12. It says, And this shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and, they, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. So the Lord is gonna, has created something that is actually going to destroy the lives of many people um and it, the only thing that is capable of destroying and consuming flesh could it has to be fire because you know fire is known to consume you know because fire is a consuming agent so that's how you know that the lord is talking about fire you know because fire is the only thing that actually is a, is a, a consuming agent like that man you know that especially that the lord uses um so the Lord is going to cause fire to rain down via thermonuclear missiles, you know, which have multiple warheads and can destroy the land of Egypt uh, very, very uh, quickly. Um, because it takes about 30 to about 30 minutes for a nuclear missile, you know, to actually reach this side of the world. And plus, you know, it might be shorter than that now that you know, Russia has equipped with hypersonic missiles. But, you know, this is all the Lord that created this this mechanism, this uh, this weapon to actually lay the land desolate. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 12, 16, that's like it. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth the instrument for his work. And I have created the waste to, to destroy. It. So the Lord created these missiles. He created them to be used. He created them to be shot into the ends of the earth, ends, ends of the world. You know, he created them for a purpose to be um, to be used. This is the Lord's army that is spoken about in the book of uh, Joel, Joel chapter two, not nah, chapter three. I believe it's chapter three. What was it chapter two? Joel chapter two, verse one, it says, blow ye the trumpet in Zion. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahweh cometh, for it is nigh at hand. 
So we blowing the trumpet right now. You know, we're blowing the trumpet. Warning the people because, you know, when the trumpet is blown, that's a warning from the Lord. You know, warning that trouble is at hand, you know. And right now we're we're blowing that trumpet, letting you know trouble is coming. It says a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the sense, to the, to the years of many generations. A fire devoured before them, and behind, oh, Salakia. I'm sorry to read verse two again. It says, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountain, a great people and a small, there had never been the like, Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations, because the Lord, the Lord has created um, these nuclear missiles and they're kind of a new thing on the earth. You know, they never seen, you know, this technology has never been used. You know, verse three, it says a fire devoured before them and behind them a flame burning. It's talking about those missiles. The land is it. as is as the Garden of Eden before them. That means the land is, you know, green and looks good. You know, it's normal, you know, got trees and, you know, grass and things of that nature, fruit trees and, you know, all of that. It says, and behind them, a desolate wilderness, because after these missiles hit, it's going to make the land a wilderness, a desert, so to speak. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. So nothing is going to escape these missiles, man. You, it, there is the only way you can escape these missiles is you in a chariot of your by Shemel shot. If you're not in no chariot, you about to be, you about to be consumed by that fire, man. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. What does horse, horses uh, represent? Horses represents power. It says, and, and so as horsemen, so shall they run. So they're going to be shot. They're going to be shot out of those silos. Like the noise of chariots on the top of the mountain, shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness, because there are, those missiles are going to bring devastation to, to this earth. Heavy devastation. You know, they shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march everyone on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. So these missiles are not going to, they're going to hit where they're supposed to hit. They're not going to run into each other. They're not going to penetrate each other. Those missiles are going to hit their, what their, their, their targets. It says, neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Because, you know, they got missile defense systems um, set up. And they're not going to be, those missile defense systems are not going to work. Man. You know, they shall run unto the to, to and fro in the city. They shall run up the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter into the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them and the heavens shall tremble because those missiles are going to shake the earth. The scripture says that, you know, uh, to and fro like a drunkard, you know. Isaiah 24 and 20, it says the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. Because when those missiles hit this earth, it's going to cause it, you know, all these missiles are going to hit the earth at the same time, causing it to, you know, shake. Man. That's why the scripture says the earth shall quake before them. The sun shall be turned into dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Why? Because of the, because of the mushroom clouds. You know, they have a term for it. It's called nuclear winter. Those mushroom clouds are going to actually you know, cloud the sky and, you know, cause the sun to, you know, go away, so to speak, man. It says, and the Yahweh shall utter his voice before his army. His camp is very great, for he is strong that executed through his word, for the day of Yahweh is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Only the elect can abide the day of the Lord. It says, therefore also now, said Yahweh, turn ye even to me with all your hearts, with fasting and weep with weeping and with mourning. And rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto Yahweh for your God, for his grace is merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repented, repented him of evil. So your best bet is to turn back to Yahweh Shemel Shah, you know, because the Lord is finna hit America with a bunch of plagues, and that, that last plague is the the mother of, you know, is the end all be all, so to speak, man. 
a very hot day is coming. Malachi verse, chapter 4, verse 1. It says, For behold, the day coming, said Yahweh. It's like it. For behold, the day coming that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, said Yahweh of hosts, that it shall lead them neither root nor branch. So the Lord is, is a very hot day that's coming upon this earth. You know, so it behooves you to, um, you know, turn back to the Lord. You know, and we ain't finna, you know, beat you across the head. Hey, you're going to either turn back to the Lord or you're going to die. It's simple as that, man. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 12. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. So you need to kiss the son, man. Y'all be, so, you know, kissing up to the wrong ones, man. You know? Y'all be kissing up to the wrong ones. It says, uh, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. So blessed is all they that put their trust in the Lord, man. That's all you got to do. Put your trust in the Lord. That's all you got to do. And um, separate, separate yourself and, you know, turn back to Yahweh Shemel Shah. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be a lot of motherfuckers people that um that actually die because of this thermonuclear fire a lot of people are going to take the chip so it behooves you to turn back to the lord before the lord smites egypt with plagues man you know so with that you know i ain't want to make this lesson too long lord willing it was edifying you know the lord finna smite egypt which is america the modern day egypt with plagues and it, it, america's gonna fall and never gonna rise again you know like the scripture says babylon the great is falling it's falling so with that, I'm going to say Shalom. Kwam Yashallah. Wa'abah Baba. Wa'abah Arawam. Shalom.